privilege to be here. It's always the tall guy that gets in your way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a privilege for me to welcome you all here to Mannheim uh, for such, such an important event, such an important conversation. Uh, it's my privilege to represent Northern Lancaster County, the 36th Senatorial District in the Pennsylvania State Senate. And I'm thrilled that we are joined this morning by a number of my colleagues in a bipartisan way uh, to show their support. Uh, Senator Capaletti is here from the 17th District. Thank you for joining us. Representative Penny Cook from the 147th District, I believe. Both are from the Southeast. And thank you so much for being here this morning. And my predecessor in the House of Representatives in the 41st District, uh, Brett Miller, is here this morning. Thanks so much. And then, of course, we're going to hear from my colleague, uh, Doug Mastriano, uh, shortly. And, Doug, thank you so much for making the trip down. It's my privilege this morning to welcome you here and just express my thanks to each of you for being here in Mannheim to bring awareness to this life-saving initiative and to show Pennsylvania drivers just how critical it is to move over when approaching emergency response area. Special thanks to the Pennsylvania Traffic Incident Enhancement Group for coordinating this event and bringing stakeholders, accident survivors, families of victims, and over 160 emergency first responders, first responder organizations together today to highlight the importance in the, of the new and improved move over law. Many thanks to my colleagues, Senator Doug Mastriano and Senator Kim Ward for sponsoring this legislation to strengthen the law and increase penalties for the violation of the law. Doug, I want to thank you for your leadership on this issue and many others and for joining us here in Mannheim this morning. As you know, the consequences for violating the move over law can be deadly. In just a few short moments, you will hear from survivors of traffic accidents resulting from a driver's failure to move over and pass at a safe distance. Data indicates that more than 70% of drivers in the United States are unaware of move over laws. We are here today to bring awareness to this law, educate Pennsylvanians on how to properly pass an emergency response area and protect our emergency responders and roadway workers just as they protect us. Thank you to all the brave men and women here today for all that you do. You put your lives on the line each and every day to keep our families and our communities safe. Now it is time for Pennsylvanians to return the favor, to move over, and to keep you safe. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Senator. So you all remember back in the fall, there was a Senate bill that moved very quickly through the House and the Senate and became law, but we needed a little bit of time to prepare the messaging, and so that law goes into effect on April 27th. I was part of a planning team that worked to move the apparatus from the um, State Farm Show Complex to the Capitol for the Move Over Rally in September. And since that time, I've joined Penn Time as a co-chair of their Public Education and Outreach Committee. In January, I said to Todd Lease, Todd Lease is our next speaker representing Penn Time, so he'll be telling you a lot more about that organization. But I said to him, how are we going to educate the motoring public about the Move Over Law? Because everyone in this audience today knows the risks and we all understand why we slow down and move over but how do we do that for the public and so the idea of a PSA is what uh, was discussed and we quickly put together in mid-January a committee of about 25 people meeting every two weeks via zoom which I hate the zoom format <laughs> and with 25 or so people who I don't even know to be honest I don't know the people on this committee but I do know that they are state and local uh, officials some of them are responders, some of them work at PennDOT, some of them work at the Turnpike Commission, and some of them um, work in legislative bodies. And so we worked very hard to bring this event to you today, and it has turned out beautifully. But I want to give a shout out to a couple of people, first being Mannheim Auto Auction. Because when I reached out to the Mannheim Auto Auction, 
My full-time job is an EMT with Northwest EMS. This is the Northwest EMS response area. I reached out to the Mannheim Auto Auction and I said, do you think you would give us a space to hold a, an event like this? And immediately the reply was yes, and I'm going to put you in touch with who will be your primary contact. And that was Officer Todd Neifert who manages um, their security here. But Officer Neifert is with Northern Lancaster County Regional Police Department. He got his chief's permission and very quickly we brought on board East Hemfield Township Police Department and West Hemfield Township Police Department and their officers and um, the local responders along with a statewide committee put this event together. So we welcome you here and I wanted to just give a shout out to those folks that I know. The rest of the committee I really don't know very well. So we're going to move on um, because the goal of this today is to get pictures and video and then that will be worked into a PSA that will be distributed to you in the same fashion you got the invitation to join and if we can push this message far and wide and however we can under the pen time umbrella or under your responder agency umbrella push safety messages to the community that's why we're here today so my next speaker is Todd Lease um, he's representing pen time he likes to say he's just a participant but I think he's the leader <laughs> She always yells at me. Yeah. I may be in charge, but she's the one who tells me what to do. So. She's, she's my uh, pen time wife, apparently. So. Uh, but, you know, so why are we here? Again, pen time. It's the statewide traffic engine management program that we started in 2017 to do exactly what we're doing now. Communicate, coordinate, and cooperate. Bringing your responders together. Talked about 151 responders already killed in Pennsylvania. Uh, many more injured. Over the past three years in the United States, 44 responders have been struck and killed in 2019. 46 in 2020 when traffic volumes, quite frankly, were down 40 to 60 percent. I'm going louder. You ask for it, you get it. Okay. Uh, so again, 40 to 60 uh, percent traffic volumes down. So far this year, we have 10 emergency responders struck and killed in the United States. Seven police officers, three towers. We have to change this, okay? So we have to move over law. Our Senate and our legislators, uh, the House of Representatives have done a great job of getting this law passed to increase penalties for us. But every one of you that are here today, this isn't just a one day event, okay? We need your voice beyond this. I need you to be your, the voice, we need you to be the voice of change, okay? This isn't happening uh, if without all of our voices being heard. Okay, I need you as a responder to be trained. I'll give you free training anytime you want it. Either through respondersafety.com or you know, get a hold of Pentine. We'll give you free training. We'll set up a class. We'll come out and do a, our, our traveling dog and pony show for you. Uh, you know, we need you to wear high vis. So thank you guys for wearing high vis. I asked you to do the emails, doing the many emails I sent out about wearing high vis. You did that uh, for us too. And work together and communicate and, and make sure that we uh, are all working together. So thank you for coming out. Uh, we will get this video edited. This is just one portion of the video. Uh, we're going to try to edit some other things together. We have some clips of some of the agency representatives, uh, uh, Colonel Ivanchek from the uh, State Police, Mark Compton from the Turnpike, Secretary Gramian from PennDOT. Uh, so we will also add some other clips in. We asked our local uh, police partners to give some video uh, of them in their uniforms and then interacting with their families because at the end of the day, we all want to go home to your family. Just show me, uh, show of hands, how many responders in here have been struck before, or know somebody that have been struck? All right. Yeah. Oh. It happens way too often. Okay. We need to make that change. So thank you for coming out. Uh, once we get done with the speakers, we will uh, give you some more instructions. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Todd. Can you reach? 
<laughs> it is my honor to introduce our next speaker. I learned something new about a week ago, literally a week ago. This next speaker yeah, is James Garcia. He's a retired paramedic, but in 1994, he was a struck victim. He'll tell you that story, but he is credited with writing the first move over law in the nation. And he's gonna also tell you that story. He just shared with me, I literally just met him, that he wrote that law at his kitchen table. So I'm not gonna steal his thunder, um, but retired paramedic, James Garcia, welcome. Wow. It's so amazing to see this, and so amazing to see so many people that are aware of the importance of this law. Um, paramedic uh, 1994 is working at an accident in Lexington, oh. South Carolina. While I was at the accident, 5.30 in the morning on a cold, rainy morning, just like every morning at work, a uh, vehicle passed through, had his head turned, looking at the lights, and smashed into me. Broke my arm and broke my leg. It was a pretty significant injury. Um, while I was at the emergency room having my leg reset, the officer came in and slapped the accident report on my chest that showed I was 100% at fault for standing in the road. Should have been standing in the road that morning. Uh, well, you know, I'm a paramedic. I think, you know, it's my job to stand in the road and help people. Um, but that caused me to look into it. And as it turns out at that time, nobody had ever authorized DMS to be a scene management authority. So legally I had no coverage or protection. And nobody ever said that you can't run us over. So uh, uh, I'm sitting right there, and it wasn't was at my home kitchen table. It was at my EMS station, home trailer out in Lugoff. I just sat down and wrote what became the move-over law. Um, it took two years of study and research. You know, it wasn't right off the bat, but two years of study and research to get it passed in South Carolina. And it passed in 1996. I was thrilled to see that happen. And for the next six years, I called every state, every EMS director, every public safety across this country and said, Please listen to me. This is important. This is happening. Please. At that time, 1996, there was no Facebook. There was no internet. There were no cell phones. And nobody believed me. Everybody said, oh, that's a sad story. You know, it feels feel bad for you. But that could never happen here. And for six years, that could never happen here. Until uh, around 2000, uh, people here in Pennsylvania, Lionville. There was a significant injury here in Lionville, which caused some deaths. And that created Cumberland Valley Volunteer Firefighter yes. Association, decided to look into that and create the white paper. From the white paper, uh, the Emergency Responder Institute was created, and that was the first movement toward recognizing the, the issue and the significance of uh, struck by injuries. Um, oh. After that, there was another serious injury in Ohio, and Senator Tony Scott from Ohio tried to get the Responder uh, Roadside Safety Act passed. Didn't get through, but it did get uh, DOT and Federal Highway to look into responder safety incidents and struck by injuries. Uh, then there was a serious incident in Chicago. Lieutenant Scott Gillen, uh, Scott's law, was uh, passed in, in um, Illinois after that. And those three incidences finally started getting some attention to what was going on. But the big issue that happened at that time was dash cams and cops. We started seeing these incidences. We started seeing police, fire, EMS getting crushed, getting run over, getting smashed into on a daily basis. And we looked into it and we realized, wow, this is happening. He was right, yeah, this is actually happening. This is the largest cause of death and injury to all public safety. Police, fire, EMS, towing, roadway workers, the number one cause of accident and injury. Um, so, wow, we finally started taking it serious. I got together with the Emergency Responder Safety Institute. Uh, worked with Federal Highway and DOT right over there in Emmitsburg, and we uh, got the model law passed through the MUTCD, Manual Uniform Traffic Control Devices, and then we started going around state by state. Traffic laws can't be a federal thing. Federal has nothing to do with state uh, traffic laws, so we had to go individually state by state. And unfortunately, a lot of times we had to wait until somebody was killed or injured and go to their family, go to their constituents, their, their, their chief, and say, we're trying to get this passed. You've got to understand this is real. And it took 10 years, but after 10 years, we finally got it passed in every state. And now, hey, we've got this thing going in Canada, England, I think New Zealand, Australia, several other countries as well that see the significance of this. So, you know, after six years of begging anyone to realize this was really happening, you know, 25 years later, and we see it started to take. It's starting to work. 
The uh, move over law is a small portion of what we have to do, though. The move over law is for our aware drivers, for our paying attention people, for the people that care. So getting this PSA out, getting this information out to those people is the number one thing we can do to make things better. The next thing we have to do is realize that we as an industry have our own responsibility to protect ourselves. Traffic incident management, emergency responder safety too, Institute and other groups are sponsoring and giving training on the things that we can do in traffic incident management. How we position our vehicles, how we dress. See these lovely vests? We all got these now. We didn't have these in 1994. You know, the day after I got hit, they put a vest on every truck in South Carolina. Okay, but we see those things that we can do. Positioning, management, directing, or lighting, all those things are things that are part of our training and we're still learning and discovering that. Um, I hear people talking about, oh, this new move over law. There's nothing new about this. This has been in the book since 1996, but we are growing and learning and we're adapting and we're changing these laws. These are fluid. As time goes by, we'll see what's effective. We'll see what isn't. Things like, you know, what speed limit should you slow down to? You should slow down to whatever speed is reasonable and necessary to avoid a collision, period. All right. So again, I'm, I'm thrilled to have everybody here today. I'm thrilled. You know, I'll never know how many lives this law saved, but you know, I see you here today and I see it's going to keep working and saving more. Thank you all. Keep up with it. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I told you I just learned some of his story and uh, literally just met him, but it's my honor and privilege to introduce to you Sergeant Bob Bemis. He is a struck survivor. His date of struck was March 27th of 2015. Today marks his sixth anniversary. So, Sergeant Bemis. They told me that I could go down there, but Accept the challenge every day. That's what it's all about, right? Hang on a second, let me get my brain working here. <laughs> a small delay. There we are. I hope you had your phones out, because if I'd have fallen, that would have been hilarious, right? Six years ago today, I gained membership into a pretty exclusive club. It's not a club that you want to join. The admission standards are pretty tough. Once you're in, you can't ever quit. There's no membership cards, but sometimes you can spot a member just by looking at him or her. We don't hold meetings. But I think it's safe to say that we can all agree on one thing. We don't want any more members. Not one more. The unfortunate thing is that we don't get to decide if we want to join this club. Our families don't get to decide. Others get to decide for us. Motorists who disregard existing traffic laws focus only on what's important to them inside their own vehicles or the membership committee. And whether we realize it or not, they are always actively recruiting. I'm here today to lend my voice to all of yours, to let everyone out there know that we matter, that our families matter that our families, excuse me, that our service demands consideration for slowing down and moving over. Just because we've sworn to serve our communities doesn't mean that we signed up to be killed, hurt, disrespected, and cast aside. Every public safety member, every responder, is a citizen, has a name, 
as someone who cares about them, has every right to life, liberty, and happiness as anyone else. Every year on this day, I celebrate my Alive Day. I choose to celebrate the positive things that arose out of a tragedy, as opposed to focusing only on the negative. I enjoy spending this day with others who are dedicated to serving their communities. And I'm so very grateful that all of you took the time to be here. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to personally thank you all for your service. And for those club members that are here today, I'll be very happy to share the secret handshake with you before I leave. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant. So I'm going to introduce Dr. Candace McDonald, representing Respondersafety.com. Good morning. I'm Dr. Candace McDonald, second vice president of the Cumberland Valley Volunteer Firemen's Association. I'm a volunteer firefighter and I'm an EMT, but by day, I'm federal law enforcement. What I haven't done yet is I haven't had the opportunity to drive a wrecker. So if there's any tow no. industry folks here that are willing to accept that challenge <laughs> now, so one step closer. So like Mr. Garcia said, the Cumberland Valley Volunteer Environment Association has been fighting distracted driving for over 22 years, through education to the public and our first responder community. We recently partnered with the National Safety Council to conduct a survey of parents about distracted driving behavior. According to the survey, parents rank texts, phone calls, and children in the back seat as the top three driving distractions. See? But what we did know what I'm is that we, <laughs> we focused on PA, and, and the survey was a national survey, but we also wanted to look at PA because we know how important data is to PA and to Todd and to the turnpike and the work that you're doing. And the data specific to PA is, Four and five respondents of the survey stated they used their phone while driving. Four out of five. 70% considered text messaging as distracting. It's scary to think that there's still 30% out there that don't realize that it's an issue. We also found that in PA, the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted how people are driving. A small group admitted to driving faster than the posted speed limit and they admitted to driving more distracted due to less congestion. There was some good news from the survey. Four out of five of the PA folks surveyed said that they know the details of the move over laws. I'm sure that is because all of you have been a voice, but we still have work to do until we hit 100%. Distracted driving is such an important topic. Distraction-free driving keeps everyone safe, including first responders who put their lives in harms to help others when emergencies occur. We are so proud to partner with our friends in PA to promote this law. We are also proud to offer free training for our first responder friends at respondersafety.com. This was designed to help you get home safely to your family. And remember, we've got your back. Thank you. Thank you. So as I look at our program, I want to just bring one mistake we made. It's the only mistake we made in this whole planning and all of the logistics. Um, so please forgive us. But our next um, speakers is the Lawton Slugger family. They lost Tyler, who was a tow operator and a firefighter. Um, Tyler had that engine, which is a retired engine that he had bought for his daughter. And I will let his family, when they speak, share. Um, but Tyler's passing in the program is listed as July 25th of 2001. It is oh. July 21 of two, 2020. July 21 of 2020. So our apologies to the Long Slaughter family. Um, we think it's the only mistake we could possibly have made today. So come on over, um, Deb and whoever from the family would like to speak. Thank you for being here.
morning. Wow. Different view from a couple steps up. Thank you, everybody, for coming out today. Um, as you heard, my name is Deb Loudenslager. I'm Tyler's mom, and here with me today are Tyler's wife, Holly, his little girl, Riley, his sister, Heather, and Wes. When Todd asked me if I wanted to say a few words today, my initial thought was, oh. I don't think I can do this again. I then remembered the vow that I made to Tyler, and that vow was that I would help spread the slow down, move over message in any way that I could. So I'm speaking to you today to honor that vow to Tyler. Tyler was a tow operator for S, I'm sorry, H&S Towing, who are here today. Tyler was also a volunteer firefighter for the Halifax Fire Department for 13 years. Thank you, H&S and Halifax, for showing your support here today. Being a tow operator was not Tyler's first career. Tyler worked for Norfolk Southern as a conductor and then moved on to become an engineer. He decided that the railroad was not the right career for him and decided to get his CDL license and drive over the road truck. His travels took him mostly out west and he spent a lot of nights away from home. A few years into his trucking career, he talked to me about changing jobs and told me that he was going to leave the trucking industry and become a tow operator. I knew nothing about the towing industry and had to trust that he was making the right decision for his family. Little did I know at that time that Tyler and Holly were planning on starting a family. Then fast forward to September 27, 2019. Yeah. Ryler Marie Loudenslager was born. Tyler and Holly were on top of the world and were making so many plans for the future, as any new family does. Riley immediately became the center of Tyler's world. His work family that are here today can tell you that he would show pictures of Riley to them quite often. They probably got a little bit sick of it. Tyler was working on restoring a fire truck, as you were just told, um, for Riley so that they could participate in parades and special events. The Riley truck, as it is known to everyone, is right over there. Thanks to a co-worker and a dear friend, and you know who you are, the Riley truck has participated in several events since Tyler's death. Unfortunately, Tyler, Holly, and Riley only got to spend 10 months together as a family. On July 21st, 2020, Tyler was struck and killed on I-78 in Berks County while assisting a vehicle. Tyler was only 29 years old. Tyler was the 26th line of duty death. The days following his death are a blur. In less than 48 hours after Tyler was killed, there was a processional that spanned three counties. We were amazed and honored to see the outpouring and love and support that was shown. There was not an overpass that did not have some type of apparatus on it. We were asked to speak today about the impact that Tyler's tra tragic death had on us. Where do we even begin? Six weeks after Tyler's death, we were asked to speak at the Move Over Rally at the State Capitol. A huge thank you to Senators Ward, DeSanto, and Senator Mastriano for fighting for Senate Bill 1281. Two months after Tyler's death, we celebrated Riley's first birthday. The party was at the Halifax Fire Department. All of the tables had pictures of Tyler on it. We needed to feel close to him, and he needed to be there with us. After the party was over, we went to the cemetery, and Riley shared some of her birthday balloons with her daddy. That was not how we were supposed to celebrate Riley's first birthday. We managed to be happy, but there were also a lot of tears. Holly has had to learn how to be both mom and dad by no choice of her own. I admire her so much for her strength and for her courage. Poor Riley will never have any memories of her own of her daddy. Heather graduated with her master's degree a few days before Tyler died. She missed out being able to celebrate that milestone with her big brother. Tyler and Heather lost their dad at a young age. Tyler was 20 and Heather was 17. Tyler was supposed to walk Heather down the aisle when she gets married someday. 
We celebrated Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's with an empty chair at the table. We, we decided, despite the pandemic, that we were not going to celebrate a holiday not being together. <clears throat> February 13th would have been Tyler's 30th birthday. We honor Tyler by going to the cemetery with family and friends, and we released Chinese lanterns. I could talk for days how Tyler's death has impacted us. There really are no words. Tyler was killed eight months ago, and a lot of times it still feels like it's a bad dream. I can't tell you how many times I still reach for my phone to pick up and dial his number to call him. When I pass their house, I still look for his truck sitting in the parking, in the driveway, I'm sorry. I pass the cemetery every day to and from work, and I blow him a kiss and tell him that I love him. I'm a moderator on a Facebook page called Slow Down, Move Over North America. A month ago, I was asked to reach out to Austin Gaines' mother. Um, he was the tow operator who was struck in Florida on February 1st and was taken off life support on February 28th. As part of that Facebook page, we are there to support the Slow Down, Move Over and the families that have faced a tragedy. Austin was a few years younger than Tyler, and he had three children. But I thought, what was I supposed to say to this poor mom? She was in the same shoes that I was just seven months before that. The entire time I was texting her, I was shaking and sobbing. I reached out to her just to let her know that I understood and that I was here for her. And I, I messaged her every day for the first seven days after Austin had passed away but it was like reliving Tyler's death all over again. I knew what she was feeling every single day. I hate the families have to go through what we are going through because someone did not slow down and move over. We have to spread this message far and wide. We have to continue to think of every possible way, way that this message is heard, but more importantly, that the message is understood. Um, again, thank you, H&S Towing, Halifax Fire Department, for becoming a part of our family. And of course for Todd and his team for supporting us. And now Heather would like to, to read something that she wrote for her brother. Good morning. Thank you all for being here today. I'd like to share with you all a poem that I wrote for Tyler that was shared at his services. It's simply entitled, Tyler's Poem. I know the world seems dark right now without me in your life, but no, I couldn't have asked for more, a perfect daughter and a beautiful wife. You wanted me to stay with you, but God had other plans. When duty called, I had to go. I hope you'll understand. The fire is out, my chains are hung, the sirens no longer blare. The lights may be off, but please don't cry, for I am still right there. My time was short, but oh so sweet, within your heart is mine. Just know that there was no better life than the life that I called mine. Thank you. Thank you. And what you should probably know is that Deb was part of our committee. Deb has steadfastly, in spite of how difficult things can be, has um, come to the table at all of our meetings and interjected ideas and thoughts on how to move this message forward. So thank you, Deb, and to your entire family. So our last speaker I'm going to introduce, and I'm just going to remind you that when that speaker's finished, we'll give you more instructions about getting group photos and then moving you out to your apparatus so our photographers can capture more. So um, it is my honor and my privilege to introduce Senator Doug Mastriano from the 33rd District. Senator Mastriano was one of three senators that co-sponsored Senate Bill 1281. Thank you, my friends. And this is about saving lives. These are one of the issues that, that myself and Senator Ryan Allman came together with on the governor in the saving lives. And that, that's where the government can serve you best. So, Senator, thanks for hosting me in your area. Thank you for everyone for putting us together here. Our hearts and our... Uh, Tears go out to those of you who lost friends and family members, and for those of you in recovery. Uh, this is designed to reduce and hopefully completely get rid of 
this tragedy happens on the sides of the roads. Too many people have lost their lives. Jesus says in the Gospel of John that there's no greater love than this but to lay down your life for a friend. And so you're on the side of the roads doing your job, fire, EMS, towing, police, law enforcement, and uh, just, just trying to save lives. And, and it's dangerous out there. So we're praying a hedge of protection over each of you in Jesus' name. But uh, thank you for coming out here. It's a great day God's blessed us with. And too many lives have indeed been lost in this entire situation, and it needs to stop. Uh, and I am moved by the suffering. You know, Tyler's family, it's good to see you guys again. I wish we hadn't met on these occasions, but I think uh, using such tragedy for good is a small way that, that, that will help other Pennsylvanians. And that's my prayer, bring a little bit of comfort in this tragedy for a law sake that can never be forgotten. And we're praying God's blessing and comfort on each of you as well. The key thing here is uh, Senator Ryan Ahmed and myself and, and, and so many others, we didn't stand aside. And it all started about a year and a half ago when a tow operator in Chambersburg came to my office, Tom Bricker. Just, just, just one of you guys. Just, just, just one of the good American people. Not, not any different than me. And he, he, he laid out something I didn't know. He goes, "It's dangerous out there. I've lost friends. I have friends who are mangled, and there's no repercussions. People are reckless. We need to draw attention to that." And uh, that's how this all started. And this is how it's supposed to be, where your your legislators work for you. And Senator Ryan Alm and myself, we try to do that. So if you see a need. If you see something that needs to be fixed and addressed, you come and see us, and we'll do what we can to make it happen. And this this is a good news story in that we heard about the tragedy, and uh, we worked together, believe it or not, with the governor, of whom I've differed a lot this past year, right? But this is an issue we need to come together on, and we did. You know, some of you received the uh, signed certificates with both my signature and the governor's signature. You know, I bet you never thought you'd see that happen before, huh? It, it, it's possible. But that's when... Regardless of your politics, we need to come together on some of these issues, like saving lives of people out there on the roads doing their jobs. And uh, in seven weeks, that bill was passed. That had to be a record. Seven weeks, absolutely incredible. And it's a testament of, of uh, when finally Harrisburg is working for you. Thank you. It was no small miracle. But with God, all things are possible. I know many of you were out there were praying. And it was on the heels of, of, of Tyler's tragic passing that this came. And uh, thank you from having the courage to, to speak so so close to that tragedy and to testify before the Senate. And uh, your message resounded. There, there were no no votes on this, which is you're not a given these days when things are so hyper-partisan. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up here because this is about you. And so I have actual copies of the bill signed by myself and uh, the governor. And also, normally when a senator or rep has a... And Senator uh, Ryan Alman, can you come up here with me, brother? Normally, only senators or reps get, get, get a copy of these things. But what happened is that we communicated with the governor's office that there, we want to recognize people from this area and from across the state that were key into passing this legislation. So the same thing myself and Ryan receives from the governor's office, you'll get as well. It's a certificate of, of the legislation with his signature and also with a pen on it. So I'm going to call up each person. Uh, if you can come up and stand between Ryan and I. Uh, We'll get a picture with you. And the first is uh, Lori. Lori, you've been absolutely fantastic. From from letting me drive in your ambulance last uh, September to uh, putting together this fantastic <laughs> event. And uh, if you can give it up for Lori. Next is a. Uh, Next is Sherry Morgan, uh, owner of Morgan Towing. She has lots of stories to tell us. Sherry, I know you're out there. And this is the Army, right? Ryan and I are both Army combat veterans. Say, move, move. No, we won't do that. <laughs> Moving like pond water. No, I'll stop. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Sherry, uh, Ryan, and I are thankful for you. Thanks for being here. And this small moment of our appreciation. <laughs> Thank you. The next is Todd Todd Lice. I'm speaking in German. Is it Lice or Lease? I should have got it. Todd, Todd, how do you say last name? If you ask the Germans, it's, it's Lice. If you ask me, it's Lease. Okay. It has to be a Lice. Tom Lice Lease. Thank you very much. You you were hit, right? I was not, but I, I helped lead this effort and we bring everybody together. So I thank you. Th thanks for all your work, brother. Todd is part of the 10-time program coordinator. Thank you. 
Uh, Officer Todd Neifert. Todd, it's great to talk to you. Todd, I saw you back there. Come on. Yeah, bring your son up. Your wife can join us too if she likes. Hey. <laughs> Come on up. So, uh, Ryan knows you well, I understand, at the Northern Lancaster County Regional Police Department. Douglas Ober, West Hempfield Police Department. Come on down. <laughs> Ryan and I are reminiscing this like an Army Awards ceremony here. This is fantastic. This is how we do it. Thank you, brother, for all that you've done to make a difference here. Thank you, brother. Paul Kennedy. Signal 88 security previously with Lehigh Law Enforcement Officers Association. Ah, he is doing COVID-19 inoculations. He, he's on the front line of freedom there, huh? But Lori will hand it over. Uh, Deb, if we could have you and your family back up again. We could squeeze it. Now you stay with me, man. This is about you guys, you notice? This is not about Ryan or Doug Mastriano. It's about you guys out there. So, so please bear with us. We recognize a couple more people. But this is the way it needs to be, right? So uh, Bob Bemis. Bob, I, I, your story, and take your time, brother. Bob's story was very compelling in the Senate and also when we had the, the rally outside the Capitol. And I know it moved a lot of people to tears. I don't know if Jorgen shared the stage. A Marine and two Army guys. I think I think Ryan I can handle. No, we can't handle it. He's too tough. Made of steel. Semper Fi, brother. I love you, man. Next is uh, Deb Abel, president of the Pennsylvania Towing Association. Make this possible here. Come on up, Deb. Thank you for your hard work on the front line of freedom here to save lives. It's quite an honor to be here with you again. And thank you for testifying before us in the Senate as well. Last but not least is Doug Zubek of my staff. Come up here, man. I think so Doug, you know, so you know, Ryan and I, we have great staff. And so I tasked Doug to run this legislation. He's the one that did it in seven weeks. And I gotta tell you something here. There was a move by the other side of the aisle to derail this. And so Doug made some phone calls to some of your compadres across the state to convince that Democrat senator not to not to offer these ridiculous amendments because it's about saving lives, not playing political games. Right? Like you guys, Ryan and I are sick and tired of party politics. And so uh, this was a team effort here. And so if you could give it up for Doug Zoo back here to fight this fight. Jen Brubaker, where are you? Jen. Lieutenant from West Hempfield. East Hempfield. East Hempfield, sorry. Uh, I failed land navigation in here. No, I didn't. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Congratulations. 
Uh, if we could uh, just bow our heads for a moment aside.